The Northeast Indian subcontinent is underwater again, and it has been so for the past few days, going back yet again to the constant news cycle of floods. Floods in Assam, floods in Bangladesh, millions displaced. This has been happening for years and decades, and in fact, over a century in yearly records. What exactly about the geography of this whole Himalayan and coastal region makes the northeastern subcontinent so prone to floods? Why exactly do human measures never work here? Are they just ineffective, just too weak and behind the times for the single giant river here that wreaks havoc in the entire region? Or are they worsening the floods? Let's have a look at the geography and geology here the mountains and rivers and the type of soil and how and where all these rivers flow, the human activities here that have to do around water, and of course how climate change is exacerbating all impacts here, putting millions at risk every year. The northeast subcontinent of India comprises of Bangladesh, Bhutan and Myanmar and the eight northeastern states of India. While Myanmar also experiences very serious floods, the impact of the floods here specifically is felt most in Bangladesh and Assam in India. One of the main reasons for these excessive floods in this region is in fact a single powerful river. The entire northeastern Indian subcontinent is characterized by very large and powerful rivers that originate in the Himalayan glaciers. There is a lot of rainfall also here, especially when compared to the rest of the Indian subcontinent. The advantages, of course, of these are extremely fertile soil and lots of greenery, which in turn leads to hotspots of biodiversity. But the hostile terrain, the loose deposited soil, and the perennially overflowing sources of water make this region prone to natural disasters on their own. This region is a part of the Ganga Brahmaputra Meghna Basin, one of the largest river systems in this world. It covers about 1.7 million square kilometers and more than 600 million people are distributed here across India, Nepal, China, rather Tibet, Bangladesh and Bhutan. And these three rivers, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra and the Meghna, all originate in the Himalayas. While the Ganges originates on the Indian side, the Brahmaputra first flows as the Yarlung Zangpo or formerly known as Sangpo in Tibet first, subsequently passing through India and then flowing as Jamuna in Bangladesh. This is different from Ganga's Yamuna. Ultimately, Jamuna merges with the Ganges and flows as the Padma in Bangladesh. There is also the Meghna in Bangladesh which merges into the Padma, but it first originates as the Barak River that flows through Nagaland, Assam, Manipur and Mizoram. The Padma, which has the waters of the Ganges, the Brahmaputra and the Meghna, is extremely powerful and it flows into the Bay of Bengal. This is the largest active delta system in the world. Of these three rivers, the Brahmaputra is the one in this region that is most turbulent in terms of the length and area it covers and the effects it has. It is fed by a network of tributaries carrying large amounts of silt. The silt flows downhill from the Himalayas, of course, and gets deposited in the river, making the river more and more shallow, reducing its depth. This makes the river generally more unstable as its depth keeps varying and this affects its carrying capacity. It also causes the river to become braided, meaning that the river flows in various channels, leaving temporary islands of deposits in its path. When the river floods, all these different channels merge and the whole thing becomes one large body of water that is completely out of control. This merging and flooding of course occurs when it rains. Starting from the onset of summer, which in this region is around March, glaciers start to melt. This, of course, increases the volume of water that is flowing down to the rivers. The entire Brahmaputra region receives between 1000 and 6000 millimeters of rain during the monsoon, and this makes the rivers swell up from June to October. The monsoon season here might be the southwest monsoon from May, June to September, October, 
but this region also receives a lot of pre and post monsoon rain which is between march and may and then in september october and this is without break the entire time this region often tops the records for the largest amount of rain received and cherrapunji indeed has been the wettest place on earth for several years in the past the effect of heavy monsoons and an enhanced volume of water due to glacial melt causes the rivers to pick up intensity downstream and frequently resulting in floods when large mighty rivers flow like this with the volume of water rising steadily and also carrying a lot of debris like silt and alluvium a natural consequence of this uncontrolled water flow is the erosion of river banks this erosion is one of the largest problems around the brahmaputra and padma systems because the river constantly makes itself shallower and fills up with rain water it overflows eroding its own banks river bank erosion is a consequence of flooding but it also worsens the flooding because it loosens soil for hundreds of square kilometers and it appends any form of life and vegetation around which can stabilize the soil because the boundaries of the river are eroded away there is basically no boundary and the river keeps widening during floods this keeps dumping increasing amounts of water inland the erosion of river banks here is naturally extremely dynamic and this compounds the floods every year the naturally compensatory process for erosion is deposition which is river carrying tons and tons of material and soil and depositing it but the rich fertile alluvial soil that is deposited by these rivers cannot immediately be used for crops or even for natural vegetation to grow a top soil needs to develop first which can take decades but by then the river has already attacked multiple times studies have shown that the brahmaputra and the more unstable padma erode more material than they deposit constantly and steadily widening and loosening the soil for hundreds of kilometers in fact survey data has shown that the brahmaputra has widened to twice its original size since the 1920s the large amount of silt that the river carries which is at about 11 million metric tons in 2019 makes this river even more destructive during floods of course the region is also prone to earthquakes as it's seismically active whenever there are quakes the rivers have changed courses in the past and quakes and landslides also lead to increased deposit of debris into the river making it even shallower This by extension of course makes the river even more destructive. A makeshift solution proposed for the danger from these rivers are embankments first put in place by the British. Embankments are basically anything that would add an artificial boundary to the width of the river or the river bank protecting the river from flowing on to land and preventing flooding. But the Brahmaputra is too mighty and powerful. Temporary embankments, supposed permanent ones, geotubes temporary flood walls permanent flood walls everything has been washed away or breached even other structures like dams and canals with which the british raj introduced to manage floods continue to be used for the same practice today but are not efficient they never have been occasionally they are even said to prevent the water from receding back causing land to remain waterlogged the lack of planning in their construction has enabled these measures to actually worsen the problem as well human constructions in some way or the other obstructs the natural flow of water draining into these rivers obstruction of water also obstructs debris and silt flow so material that gathers in natural channels and washes off into the ocean tends to clog human structures reducing the carrying capacity of these natural drainage channels when these are released the large amounts of water coupled with the silt makes the rushing of this material extremely hazardous this is already seen several times when water is released from dams during flooding which in fact worsens the state of flooding Existing embankments often date back to the 1940s in India and 1960s in Bangladesh and are very vulnerable to breaches. Bangladesh has lost land elevation due to embankment buildings since the 60s. This also extends to things like construction of roads which are not always planned well. Construction of roads involves removal of vegetation, 
depressing the surface and reducing infiltration of water to maintain structural integrity. Roads are always at the risk of collapsing in floods and they cause rainwater and flood water to drain inefficiently. This especially occurs when roads are built transverse or perpendicular to natural drainage channels, blocking smaller water pathways. They also lead to accumulation of deposited silt carried by the river, causing localized blockages to water drainage. The increasing air and surface temperatures have a role to play in the unprecedented floods as well. Increased air temperature causes increased glacier melting feeding into the rivers. This carries silt also, increasing the probability of floods and landslides. Increased air temperature also causes more evaporation, which saturates the atmosphere with humidity and moisture. This then leads to more extreme bursts of rainfall that are more intense and dump a lot of water in very short periods of time. In fact, experts have pointed out that the Ministry of Earth Sciences has started using the term mini cloud bursts to signify such events, especially at the foothills of Himalayas and Western Ghats, and these seem to be increasing in intensity and frequency, which in turn leads to floods and landslides. As the sea surface temperature increases, there are marine heat waves that affect the monsoon. There is also an impact on cyclones, and the flatter terrain of Bangladesh is particularly prone to it, pulling in cyclones from the Bay of Bengal. This also increases flooding events. Bangladesh is one of the worst affected countries and regions in terms of flooding and among the Indian states, Assam has the worst deal here. The Brahmaputra flows through the length and breadth of the state as does the Barak River which has caused currently devastating floods and landslides there. In addition to all of this, studies have shown that the monsoon pattern over the Indian subcontinent has steadily been affected by the rising global temperatures and frequent marine heat waves. This has caused magnified changes to the seasonal rains on which at least 1 billion people depend each year. And we know that global temperatures have already risen by 1.1 degrees since the pre-industrial times and we are very definitely crossing 1.5 degrees within the next 20 to 30 years. Knowing that these extreme events are going to become even more extreme, we cannot make do with temporary measures to deal with flooding and landslides here. Everything from embankments to relief and rescue efforts are temporary measures to deal with floods at the moment. Experts here have called for other natural and indigenous practices to help mitigate damage and deal with excess water over the long term. These include things like river basin management, catchment areas where water can be caught, so to speak, maintaining river corridors, enabling better natural drainage channels, increasing land and soil protection, better urban planning and construction, and using natural resources like mangroves, which have been used indigenously for quite a while and are known to break up water current surges and help keep the land stable by retaining sediments and reducing erosion. These kind of long-term measures become more and more important because the environment is fighting back from all sides here. Melting glaciers on the one end, increasing cyclones on the other, and rising intense frequent rainfall all over. Ample studies have shown now that the entire northeastern subcontinent is going to be faced with more and more extreme weather and climate events. And long-term solutions that are compatible with the natural geography here are urgently needed to keep safe the millions and millions of people that live here.